Yo guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to episode three uh, with Tea with Mike. Uh, joining me today is uh, at, at the Wanderers and uh, Notebook. Um, we're just going to jump r right in, and you can always catch up on this episode later. So, Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, of course, on every as you know, on every episode of Tea with Mike, we ask ask you, what is your favorite type of tea? So, Alex, what is your favorite type of tea and why? I am very partial to Earl Grey. I don't know why, it just tastes good, but I also do like orange pea help. I'm, I'm a real tea guy. I can't stand coffee, so tea is my go-to source of caffeine. Right on, man. Um, so, so, just before the show started today, uh, thanks for the people that are joining us. Um, we, Alex was telling me about homemade Earl Grey tea. Tell, yeah. tell me more about that, Alex. Um, well, basically, when where I have a, me and my family, we have a property out on BC in BC, and um, we ha we get our we get Earl Grey from the supermarket there, and I just prefer uh, making a cup of tea myself rather than going to like a Starbucks or Tim Hortons. Considering that I've worked at Tim's, I do know uh, the intri intricacies when, with making uh, coffee and tea and all that sort of stuff. But I it's Making it homemade, it's, it gives it that more personal touch rather than just kind of like going in to like a Tim's or whatnot. It, I yeah. just I prefer it, honestly. So Alex, when you're making a cup of tea at your house, how long does it take you to make that cup of tea? Talk us through some of the steps. Okay, so I obviously first I have to get my special cup. Nice. I, well, it depends on like if I'm making it for my dad or my mom. I, I have special cup. They have special cups as well. So okay. my dad he uses a Vancouver Aquarium mug they got from the Vancouver Aquarium. That um, proceeds from the sale of that mug go to uh, protecting the world's oceans. Right now. And my mom she uses a mug that she got from the Vancouver Art Gallery uh, from the Monet exhibit that they had there. So the lily flower, the lilies on the pond mug that she uses that a lot. Um, and then I boil the water. I I ask my parents for how, how much sugar they want to have in their tea. So they take sugar in their they tea. They take sugar in their tea. Mm -hmm. My my dad takes two lumps. My mom takes one and a half lumps, and I'm a two to three lump type of type of guy. Okay. And then I put the tea bag in. I let it steep because my my mom and dad they love their steep tea. That's what they get from. Tim's when we're on the road, okay. and I'm kind of like that, but I usually take my tea bag 20 to 30 seconds out. Like once I put it in, I wait 20 to 30 seconds, take it out, because that's how how was how, how I was taught at Tim's. Just let it steep for a bit and um, just take it out right away, or wait until it has that full flavor. Okay, and then I add milk and then sugar, and then I serve. Nice. So how long does the how long does the overall process take for you? I'd say close to fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes? Well, because I have to boil, I have to right. I have to question my parents on what they want, and sometimes I even have like little nibblies that they have along with their tea, so I have to like get those out, put them on a plate, and arrange it in a very good manner. So yes, love it, man. Excellent. Yes. Uh, for me, so for me, uh, the tea process is. Again, quite complex. Of course, you, you're going to start with your get all your basic stuff. You got your mug. Mm -hmm. You got you got your teaspoon for stirring the tea bag. Yes. So the first thing I always do is I put the kettle kettle on to boil. Yeah. And and as the kettle's boiling, and then get out my tea in, in, tea bags from the um, cupboard. I always because I like super strong tea. Mm -hmm. I always I, I always put two um, tea bags mm -hmm. in for every cup of tea that I drink. Yeah. And then I obviously I let the water boil. Mm -hmm. And then I'm pretty simple in terms of how I like my tea. Yeah. I like my tea really strong and black. So all I've got to do when the kettle boils is I've got to um, I've just got to pour in the water yeah. and let let it steep for a little bit, maybe one to one and a half minutes, because mm -hmm. it's a balance between getting it, making it too weak and too strong. And too strong, right? Yeah. You got it, dude. And then so after that, you take you know take out the tea bags. Uh, obviously, put them in the compost because you yeah. want to be sustainable to the environment. Yeah, exactly. And then the tea is good to go. And, well, we have to protect our Earth, right? We've only got we one Earth. I guess thanks everyone who's joining the uh, live stream on Facebook. I appreciate. I appreciate. I really it. appreciate it too because I'm trying to 
grow my YouTube channel, and this is a great way for me to gain exposure for the, my channel. Um, so as as we're, sure, as we're talking about YouTube, do, do you want to tell people that are unfamiliar with your YouTube channel? Of course. Um, so about what what it yeah what it is what what is it about? Yeah, of course. Oh, oh, why they should check it out. Okay, so I I run the YouTube channel called The Wanderer's Notebook, and on my channel I go. I wander, I go to different places, I hike, I travel, I go to different sporting events, so it's basically everything associated with wandering. I'm going, I'm going to be releasing a new video series called Geocaching Adventures, probably on Friday or Sunday, um, because I love geocaching and... For those people that aren't familiar, oh, like so myself with geocaching... Okay, so geoca about? geocaching is... Oh, geocaching, sorry. Geocaching is... Um, a treasure hunt game that you use with your phone or a GPS unit, and you go around on, you can you get the app from the app store, as you can see, and you can get a, a basic membership, which allows you to only find basic caches, or you can get a premium membership, which allows you to find premium member caches, so, and also allows you access to um, premium member events, okay, um, and also multi-caches and other caches that are only available for premium members. So basically, geocaching, you go and you, like, they're hidden all over the place. So, for example, where we are right now, there's a bunch located by right through college. So, take this one that I found last. Yeah, move it in closer so we can see. Yeah, uh, I found this one a couple of months ago called Chicken Little and basically um, you uh, you put you get it on your phone on you get the app on your phone um, and guides you to location and some of the there's different ratings of caches so you micros are like extremely small they can only hold a lot but and then you can go up to smalls, medium, larges and then other sizes of caches. And it's a real it's really something that you can do for the rest of your life. Like my parents, they've been, do, they've been doing it ever since it started in Red Deer. Like, okay. Like, that was, I think, they told me that was 14 years ago. And, 14 years ago? And that, okay. they, there weren't a lot of caches back then, but they took a break from it when they had me and my siblings. Like, well, I, it was right after my brother Max was born, and they started getting back into it recently, um, and there's, like, thousands located in the Red Deer area, like, and like you, well, I find fun about it. Like if you get these things called trackables, um, you can move them to different caches. So basically, people will like buy these trackables, like or they're called travel bugs. Okay. And um, you you can set a goal for them. Like you want to see how many countries they can visit, or if you how many like or just travel around. So for example, one of the travel bugs I picked up in BC when I was out there for Christmas. It come. It had come all the way from Australia okay. to the BC. It was called uh, I can't remember. It was something orange juice or something OJ, and it traveled from Darwin, Australia, to another place in Australia, and then made its way across the to across the Pacific to Vancouver, and then made its way to Pender Island. Oh, very cool. And then I dropped it off in Golden, and I picked up another travel bug that uh, in Golden. And at it come all. It's been around the world. That one it started off in Newfoundland, and it's gone all over the place. So very good, man. Very cool. Uh, geocaching is very good. I I I love it. It's a way to keep active. Cool. So guys, stay active. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, uh, what 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 other things do you do to stay active? Like personally, for my. So if I, I like to play some table tennis, mm -hmm. a bit of football, that sort of thing, you know, I, even even in my job, I, I'm, I'm pretty active. So mm -hmm. even though I don't play sports on a competitive level, level, level yeah. it's definitely something that I um, um, do to stay active and just to hang out with friends. Yeah. Exactly. How about you? I do a lot of hiking, like I've said. Um, I... Like this past Sunday, I did get out skating. I do want to maybe try out for one of the local junior teams oh, cool. for hockey, but having I just don't I haven't been I don't really have the weight or uh, uh, the skill set yet because I didn't 
get into hockey as a kid. I was more of a football uh, guy when I was football, baseball when I was younger because um, it was just too expensive for my family okay. for hockey because and they didn't want me to uh, get concussed or anything because I'm a very smart guy. And okay. <laughs> Getting concussed on that kind of kind of causes issues when um, you want to be smart. You know? okay. And if you've seen like any of the hits that go on in the NHL, and, like like take the hit on Jonathan Marshall in last year's Stanley Cup final, he was knocked out for I think I think two games in that series. So it was like I watched that series. It was it was a bad it was a bad hit. And it was on the numbers as well, so I'm like, I didn't like. I do want to get into hockey, into hockey, but I just, just, I your personal health comes first. There you go. So personal health comes first, and don't you think football is a better game? Yeah. Well, well it's the gentleman sport, isn't it? Like, which so here we go. We're talking about football. So who's your uh, favorite football team? Are we talking MLS or? Oh English? no, we're talking English Premier oh, League, oh, the oh, true oh. home of football. Okay. Well, English Premier League. It has to be Liverpool. Then. Liverpool FC. Okay. Well, my here's a fun fact about my youngest brother Baxter. One of his middle names is Anfield because that's where my dad took my mom on their first date. Oh, there you go. That that's revealing the secrets right here on Tea with Mike. Nice dude. Yeah. So as you as you know, and lots of people out there that are watching also know, I support Manchester City Football Club, and I I I, I think that they're a really good team. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, some people when they hear who I support, they're like. Oh, you're one of those fake supporters because you're just, just, this guy is as true as a city supporter I've ever come across. Because because lots of people think as soon as any sporting team, for that matter of fact, mm. and gain money, that they're, they're like, oh, I need to jump on the bandwagon uh -huh. and support that football team. Manchester United is a great example. Uh -huh. um, Manchester United, as lots of you know, have done incredibly well in the years of the Premier League. Yep. Sir um, Alex. But 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 if you if you walk up to them and ask them uh, why they support Manchester United, they're gonna give you one or two answers. Number one is is because my friends and everybody else or support or family uh, support them. Num 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 number two, it's it's because um, it's, uh, money. it's and, money and uh, also quality of players that they can get That's from uh, the money that isn't uh, injected into the club. Well, I was gonna say number two as being. Um, when you when you when you walk up to someone and you're like, oh, so so I see you've got a Manchester United shirt on. Um, uh, what, when was the last game you went to? Oh, like, like how how was it? What what happened? Did you enjoy it? What section of the stadium were you sitting in? And they can't answer it. And they're like, well, my cousin, my dad, my brother, my family, my removed cousin. Yeah. Um, they, they sent me this shirt from uh, England, but I've never actually been to the country. Oh, oh, okay. So that, that's an yeah, example and, of a and, fake spawning fan, right? Yes, exactly. And I try and explain to my Canadian friends like about the atmosphere of going to a football match, and they can't like they can't understand it because they haven't been like to the city to a city on match. They they don't get the they don't understand the build up like the hype and so the atmosphere, exactly. spawning atmosphere in England Is, versus. Versus Canada specifically, oh, gosh. completely different. Oh, exactly. Like sure, like in the CFL, for example, I've been to a couple of like uh, games. And well, well, let's educate the audience too. What what is CFL for Canadian, those who don't know? Canadian Football League. So it's so American football. Yeah, it's complete. Well, it's a completely different game to your yeah. American football, like the NFL. Yeah. Uh, three downs, shorter field. Um, it's. It's very high intense. Like I, I love going to CFL games. I've been to, I went to one last year with the college, um, as Calgary versus Saskatchewan, the so the Stampeders versus the Riders, and I went to one this past year, the Labor Day rematch between the Stampeders and the Eskimos. And who won that game? The Eskimos won. Oh god, it, gosh, it was a close game. Uh, it was forty. 640-something? I can't remember. Okay, so pretty close. It was close, and the Stamps could have won on the last drive of the game, but the Eskimos picked it off in the end zone. All right, let's switch it up. Let's change up the topic. So if you had a free aeroplane ticket to any place 
in the world. Yes. Where would you go and why? I'd probably go to Denali in Alaska. Denali in Alaska, okay. Because I, it's one of my goals to complete the Seven Summits Challenge. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the Seven Summits Challenge is, it's 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 climbing the seven tallest peaks on each of the continents, and there's two very variations on the list. So, uh, Denali is the highest point in North America. Previously, it was called Mount McKinley, but they changed it back. I think is recently, like 2011, to the Native Americans' name for the mountain okay. to honor them. Um, then you also have Mont Blanc, which is the highest point in Europe. Uh, Everest, of course, which is the highest point in Asia. Uh, Kilimanjaro, which is the highest point in Africa. Yes, man. And I can't remember the other. Come on, you're under pressure. I know. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. Oh, don't use Google. Gosh. That's cheating. I know it's cheating, but all right. Come on. Give, seeing as you were close, I tell the audience the final. Is it the final peak? You uh, no, it's the final three peaks. Okay, uh, what, what are the final three peaks? Uh, Ang Angkongu, which is the highest point in South America. Okay. Vinson, which is the highest point in Antarctica. Okay. Elbrus, which is another highest point in, I believe, Asia. Then there's Kuskusku, which is the highest point in Australia, and that's it. But, that's it. but there, okay. there are two different lap lists, like I said. There is the base list, which includes uh, Kus Kuskusku, which is the highest point in Australia, and the Mesner list, which includes every peak except uh, the ones included, the one included on the base, the bass list. Cool, man, right on. Uh, but at getting on the top of mountaineering, you have to be an extreme, like, you have to be at an extreme level of fitness to do it because going, like, eat, like I'm, I'm a good hiker. It's just mountaineering is a completely different beast. Right. Well, sure. well, look at how many deaths have occurred on Everest and K2, for example. Like, you have to be prepared. You have to have, you have to make sure you have the right supplies and all that sort of stuff because, well, even oxygen, like once you get up there, you have to make sure you have ox oxygen with you because it's so thin at those le at that height. Yes. And it, like I watched so many documentaries, like of um, people being so underprepared for um, taking on these challenges. It's it's shocking the amount of uh, uh, people that don't understand what they're getting themselves into. So. Like even if you have, if, even if you want to like if you want to be prepared, I'd say take a mountaineering course like in I I'd say the best place I've seen ads for mountaineering courses in Switzerland because that's okay. kind of like the spiritual home of mountaineering. Uh, Switzerland to lead people on mountaineering expeditions. Okay, nice dude. So if we if we're talking if we're talking uh, in terms of uh, mo mo uh, vehicles. What would be a dream vehicle that you, that you like to drive, and oh. and and how would you kind of like customize it oh, gosh. to your needs? I'll probably get a Jeep Wrangler Sahara Edition or True North Edition. Okay. Um, just because I've always seen Jeeps as kind of like an adventurous vehicle, I'm kind of an adventurous guy myself, so it kind of fit in with my personality. So I'd probably uh get it all decked out with like. I'd probably call it the Wanderer Mobile. <laughs> there you come, nice. And I'd probably get like uh, paint a custom paint, paint job with my logo. What on. colors? Um, what colors are your logo? Um, right now they're green, red, and black and gray, metallic gray. Because um, I got someone to design it for me, and I, the it's basically it's the Earth, and then climbing tools with the channel's name. Underneath it, so it's 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 really cool. It's a really cool logo. I really like it. I also had another friend design my former Twitter head, head, header. Um, I replaced that with um, a picture of Roy Holiday because he just got inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh, cool! Right? Yesterday, I believe. Yesterday, first ballot. Uh, unfortunately, he died in a plane crash last year. But oh, it, that's certain. That's but it's. It's good to see. Well, and so many, so few players like in the MLB 
they don't get elected to the hall on their first ballot. Like, it, what, 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 sorry, what, what's first ballot again? First ballot means um, they get elected in their first year of eligibility to the Hall of Fame. How many, how many years do you have to play before you are eligible for the Hall of Fame? It, it? it depends on the length of a career, but I would say a good range would be 20 to 25 seasons, but thing in that doesn't take account into account um, if you get injured or whatnot. Like I've I've seen some really good players that get passed over because um they they use drugs or whatnot like Barry Bonds or McGuire or Sammy Sosa for example. This dude, your knowledge of baseball is pretty well, good. Well, I am wearing a Milwaukee Brewers T-shirt, so. But in all honesty, I am a Blue Jays fan. But the, not a Blue Jays. Nice. Yeah, the Blue Jays. Uh, they didn't make the playoffs last year, so I kind of jumped on the Brewers bandwagon because I wanted to spite my grandfather because he's a Los Angeles Dodgers fan. Um, don't know why. He was a fan of them when they were in Brooklyn, and when they moved west, he just kind of uh, continued to follow the team. Nice, dude. So uh, what program are you taking at Red Deer College? I, what way do you want to go? Okay, so I'm, with, in, with it. I'm in my third year. Um, and I'm in the collab program with the University of Calgary, and I'm majoring in sociology and minoring in history. So I, I want to hopefully eventually work in a museum or with the federal government because they'll allow me to use my eight years of French. Because I mean, you know, eight years of French. Well, I took it. I had to take it in my grade four and five years at the elementary level, and then I just kind of continued on with it uh, through middle school and high school. And then I also took um, three years of Spanish at the high school level. So I'm well versed in uh, French and Spanish. Like I'm not bilingual by any means, but I am. I can start a conversation. I can follow the conversation. I can read and speak the language. So I'm intrigued. Sure, you've got a live audience. Do a little bit of French and then a little bit of Spanish and then translate it into English. Okay, so bonjour, je m'appelle Alex. Uh, je ne sais pas, je ne sais pas parler anglais. So, hello, my name is Alex. I do not speak English. <laughs> okay. But I, <laughs> I literally just spoke English. Nice. So. Okay, so that's the translation. And then, and then, um, are we well, doing Spanish next? Spanish. Yeah. Let's, let's go see. Spanish. Let's see. Uh, gosh, it has been a while since I spoke Spanish, but I can't count in Spanish. Sure, anything, something basic, whatever. Yeah, uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, ocho, nueve, diez. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Is, that, is that it for Spanish? Uh, Got anything else? Like even the same sentence you did in French? Can you do that in Spanish? Uh, I'm just trying to remember how to say a lot of Spanish. Uh, uh, oh gosh, this is embarrassing. Um, it's not embarrassing. No, I, I, know, I can't I, speak Spanish. Well, I I've been able to practice in Spanish. Like I sh I shell French books every day at where I work. So like, okay. I I do it. I say I say it. I say the book title in French because then I kind of I keep it up, right? Um, hola, mi llamo is Alex. Uh, you will uh, tú es no hablas. Angles or Angles. Um, so, hello, my name is Alex. I cannot speak English, but obviously I can speak English. It's my mother tongue, so. I just love it, dude. So French, Spanish, English. That's more languages than I can speak. And I'm 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 looking to expand my repertoire of languages. So I'm looking at doing more of the Romantic languages. So, uh, Portuguese, Italian, maybe a bit of a Latin, Andorran, maybe. That's awesome. And I'm actually looking at Russian and uh, Gaelic. Gaelic? Yes, because my... Uh, What's Gaelic? Uh, Gaelic it is the language spoken in Ireland and in Scotland. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Main, yes. mainly, I mainly because I, my family is from... It, we have apparently ancestors from Scotland, so um, I want to learn some, some of the language from where my ancestors came from, but... It's just, man. Um, I, well, it's an interesting story because apparently one well, of my ancestors, he came over with William the Conqueror in 1066. Okay. So 
his last name was Declare, so he had to anglicize it to do, well, it was either Duclair or Declare, so he anglicized it to Claire. Um, and yeah, um, then it, my, my dad's mom, her name was Claire, she married into the Hunters, they had my dad and my aunt, who is over in England. Well, okay, where, where is she living in England? Uh, she, she lives in Wallasey, in, okay. on the world. So, is that is that in the south of England? No, that is oh, okay. northwest of England. Oh, northwest. So it's right. It's right across the River Mersey in England. So, um, my dad took the ferry to work. Also, we're talking Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, okay. he, he worked in Liverpool. Same with well, like, my mom. My mom and dad. They actually met in Wales at Conway Castle. Oh wow, nice. Um, my mom was over there, over on a uh, arts. Uh, I think it was an arts trip with the college, and she decided to go off on her own because they were going back to Canada after they took in like London, and she um stayed on and uh, went up to Wales. My my mom, my mom being the adventurous gal she was, um, walked up to my dad and asked if they could climb the tap like an obviously ruined tower, and he's like, "No, I don't want to do that." And she's like, "You don't have a real sense of adventure, do you?" And they kind of hit it off. Uh, they, uh, when she went back, uh, they exchanged letters and they phone each other from pay phones. That's nice, dude. And then uh, and just kind of decides to get get married. Uh, that was in, I think it was in 1990, so eight years before I was born. And they lived in England for a bit, but then they had to move because of the, of the economic situation. All right, okay. Because of Thatcher. And they wanted to have a family. They just... Um, it wasn't feasible where okay. they're economic. That's good, dude. All right, so I'm I'm actually gonna try something quick new here on Tea with Mike. Yep. You you now get to ask me like to wrap up this um episode episode three with Tea with Mike. You get to ask me a question and I'll answer it, and then you you yeah. can also answer the question. Okay. So, if you were to become a supporter of an MLS club, like Major League Soccer club, who would you support? Okay, that's actually, of all the things you could have picked, that's actually a pretty easy question. Yeah. It doesn't need much thought. And the MLS team um, that I would pick if I had to support one would be New York uh, Football Club. Because they're a sister club of Manchester City. You got it, dude. That's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah. Um, um, for me, I. Who would you pick? I've been a white cap. I've been a Vancouver Whitecaps fan, born and bred, ever since the entered the league in 2011, but even before that, when they were in the North America soccer league, I was a fan because my blog, like some of Liverpool's players, uh, actually joined the White Cats back in like the 70s and 90s. But, like, so like, uh, uh, Beardsley, he played with them. Oh, did he? Okay. Oh, yeah. I did. Like, I that's, why my dad, that. that's why my dad actually supports them because Beardsley played with them in the 90s. Um, I haven't been to a match yet, but I'm hoping to. As this year is their, oh gosh, it's an anniversary season for winning the 1979 Soccer Bowl against the New York Cosmos, which was a big deal back then because that was like a big thing. That was like the NASL championship. So nice, dude. And like the Whitecaps haven't been good since, but I, I have hopes with this year's club because they have a new they have a new coach. They have a new they have, they brought in new signings. You know that they've lost a couple of their um, more experienced players, so uh, like transfers, like they sold Alfonso Davies to Bayern for 15 million, which is a MLS transfer record nice, dude. for a natural born player. Very good. And they lost Kendall Waston to FC Cincinnati, which they're an expansion club coming in with this season. And they also lost a uh, forward Key Kamara to. The uh, Rapids, which is in this, they were one of the founding members in 1996. Very good, dude. And so I, I'm definitely looking forward to the World Cup 2026. Oh yes, coming to Canada. That is super exciting. Oh, it is. I, I'm really excited because I, the World Cup is. It's a, one, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Right, it's the biggest tournament in the world. And the amount of diversity oh, yeah. and the different people you're going to see at the tournament is exciting. Oh yeah. And the sporting atmosphere is going to be through the roof. And I well, and I also, and I'm already counting down in my calendar because I know I want to go to a game. I don't yeah. care who it's between. Exactly. I just know I'm gonna go. Oh, exactly. Like I have, I do have 
a couple of football vloggers that do follow me on Twitter, and I've offered to show them around Edmonton if they do come like, yeah. and watch some of the matches up cool. in Edmonton because I know Thogden, he's going to be coming, and Ellis might be coming, so I've offered to show them around because, well, I'm like, who doesn't love football? Man, right, there we go. Well, good. that's a great way to wrap up episode three with Tea with Mike talking about a sport that is near and dear to my heart, football. Yeah. And um, join us again. We're actually going to be live at a similar time tomorrow when Sam Calvert joins me live from England. So you don't want to miss that one. Tune in then. Alex, thank you for being on the show, man. It was uh, wonderful to be here, and I hope you guys check out Wanderer's Notebook. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.